Well, you move back to Nashville, and I guess you're kind of mixed up in the streets by that time. And then in 2000, there was a home invasion. Believe that. And, uh, okay. Talk, talk about that situation. Yeah, man, I got back home and, of course, got back out here. And they, even though I was, like I explained on, you know, independently trying to push my music, you know, I was still doing what I had to do in the sense of survival, in the sense, you know, out here. And uh, it was just one of those situ situations where, you know, when you're in the streets, you kind of know what comes along with the streets. And uh, robberies and things of that nature, they come along with the streets, you know. I happened to be in a home at the time, me and uh, a few more individuals. And, you know, it was, I don't know, one or two in the morning, lights, had, I remember the lights going completely black. I was sleeping in the middle of the floor and uh, I had a 12 gauge laying on the floor beside me. And the partner, my partner who Spotty was at the time, he was like, he was gone out of town. And he had said something to me that he never had said. And it was keep that vest on while I'm gone. You know, of course I used to have to take care of the business, but even at that time, I'm like, all right, and didn't have that vest on. And even if I did, I don't think it would have played a part in, 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 in the situation in itself because it was done kind of professional the way the, the way the guy the guys came or whatever to see me in that situation. Um, two in the morning, lights click off, and then they click back on. But when they click back on, only a few of them stayed on, one in the kitchen and one in the back room when every light was on at first in the house. But they clicked back on. And from that moment, I just remember hearing a, like a pull on the screen door. We didn't have no security door that was a bar door or none. And it was really the regular type of screen door that come along, standard screen door on the house. And uh, I just heard a, a pull on the door and then immediately, boom, you know, and uh, I kind of was laying under a cover, had the cover kind of over my head so I could kind of peek through the corner of my eye. And I just remember seeing, you know, a guy in all black with a string attached to the chopper. And he was just like, just don't nobody move, you know. And um, once he started to make his way into the house, like I said, it was a 12 gauge that was laying on the floor and there was solid chrome at that. And I think once he noticed and looked down and actually seen that gun, he immediately went to filling the cover. I could feel the barrel coming up the, the cover. You know what I'm saying? Cause I was asleep on the floor. So he got this barrel and I remember feeling it like towards my lower back, kind of moving up and just the fear, I guess, of of getting shot in the back of the head or something, just I looked up a little bit and I could see feet sticking out beside the refrigerator. And I ran, you know, towards the kitchen area. And when I ran towards the kitchen area, uh a guy, you know, popped out out, out, out beside the refrigerator and hit him once or twice. So once he got hit, I kind of turned around and seen him take the shots, but they really didn't phase him at all because he raised that chop up and just started spraying ram randomly, like brrr. And uh, I think the first two I took immediately, but I kind of was diving towards the side. So I kind of got hit in the arm and in the leg at the time, like right beside my main artery it runs down your your legs and sh so you know I crawled into the kitchen and my partner was still shooting and ducking and trying to get off from from out of the kitchen against him but I'm watching the walls fly off and shit and he was just spraying 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 in the house you know and I remember to this very day I just I don't know why my prayer was that I didn't pray to say lord don't let me get shot or lord 
don't let me die. I was actually asking God, Lord, please don't let me get hit in the head. I remember it like it was yesterday. I was just saying, Lord, please don't let me to myself. You know, because I'm looking up and watching the floor, the walls just kind of disintegrate. It was just, he was spraying. And uh, the shot stopped for a quick second. And then I remember my partner about to come out of the side of the refrigerator because he was ducking off and kind of shooting with him. And uh, the guy just stuck the gun around the door and just sprayed some more. His body was outside of the house, but he just stuck it in, sprayed a little more. And uh, by that time, the gunshot stopped. Um, you know, I looked down, and my whole entire pants was red. I didn't know where I got shot at. I knew my arm was damn near hanging off at the time. You know what I'm saying? I was, I seen that and, you know, we had so much other shit that was within the home that uh, I probably rode around an hour, hour and a half, maybe close to an hour in the back seat, just taking things to different places before my partners took me to the hospital. We had to, it was either that or where aware of whatever comes along with when the police get there. So I was blessed to just get shot in the house, let me say that much. And uh, when I got to the hospital, you know, I was dropped off or almost, I ain't gonna say dropped off. My guys had brought me into the hospital and the detectives was already there waiting on, 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 on us to get there, to be honest with you. So when my guys tried to, you know, drop me off at the hospital, they were like, hold on. You know, I remember hearing the detective telling my partner, you know, what happened back there at that house? We know he got, where he got shot at the home. And my partner was like, what house? I just picked him up shot. He was like, man, don't tell me no bullshit, man. And my partner was like, bro, I just picked him up. You know what I mean? I don't know what happened or whatever. And then he, before I kind of went all the way out, because I passed out from the loss of blood, but before I passed out, I still remember the detective grabbing his T-shirt and said, well, you explain this. And I kind of raised up on the stretcher and seen what he was talking about. And uh, my partner had a white T-shirt that had like three, four clean holes, bullet holes. You could still see the burnt marks on the shirt that was in it, in a line up his shirt. And he was he was kind of lost stuttering from there. You get what I'm saying? And everything kind of went blank for me from there until the next day I walk, woke up and I had lost so much blood. That's what it, you know, they end up having to do the whole blood transfusion and all of that good stuff to get me back to where I met through the grace of God. And, you know, unfortunately, that's what come along with the streets. But from that moment of me being shot, I made a decision within myself and within life it changed my whole entire life in regards to making my rap career happen. You know, uh, God bless the dead in a sense. You know, God bless the guy who shot me. He's no longer living. Oh, so you know who shot you? Yeah, yeah, I know who shot me. You know what I'm saying? And uh, like I say, he's no longer here. Uh, I don't know how. Yeah, I mean, died. karma. You go around spraying up people's houses. You probably don't have a long, a long life to live. Yeah, shit happens. I don't, I don't know what shit, happens. Shit happens. Yeah. yeah.